So today we're going to be gearing up for uh, the spring and summer seasons coming up and I'm going to be giving you my full review on Bulgari Man Glacial Essence. So I've done a buying guide, I've talked about uh, bits and pieces of this line spread across the channel and some top tens and that sort of thing. And uh, really the best way to learn about the whole line is to watch the buying guide. But to, just to give you a general idea about this one, uh, this is going to be really kind of the best, uh, easiest jumping off point into the line if you're just going for mass appeal and you're going for something that is super likable. Bulgarian Man in Black would probably be one of the next best ones or really even uh, Bulgarian Man Extreme Citrus Heavy. Realistically, just about the whole line is easy to get into. Uh, Bulgarian Man in Black is kind of uh, the one that draws in the most attention because it's kind of a spice bomb scent. Uh, but when you're taking a look at fragrances that kind of fit into the uh, fresh mass appeal department, that's what Glacial Essence is going to be. In a way, it's kind of filling the void of a, a blue fragrance to some extent. Now, it's not full-on blue fragrance level, but in terms of its versatility and its mass appeal and, and that sort of thing, that's kind of where this one falls. So I'm going to be going over this one today. I'm going to tell you how it smells, how it performs, when you can wear it, and ultimately if I think it's worth picking up. Let's get into it. So when you first spray this one on, up top, immediately, you get this very nice, bright, citric opening. Uh, it, it smells great and a lot of fragrances in this line uh, share a, a similar kind of opening uh, you know aside from like Man in Black uh, but when you take a look at uh, Man Extreme and the uh, Wood Essence Wood Neroli those all kind of have a nice citrus punch up top uh, this one's no exception it opens up bright fresh and a bit aromatic it kind of has this cooling refreshing smell to it also we will take a look at the note breakdown here. Up top we have juniper berries, ginger, and geranium. In the mid we have sandalwood, orris root, and artemisia. And in the base we have clear wood, musk, and cedar. So out of that note breakdown, uh, what do you get the most of in the opening? For me, you get that nice mixture of a, a geranium, juniper berries combination. So the geranium is giving off this kind of green, minty, aromatic feel. The juniper berries give off this also aromatic, kind of spiced smell, um, a little bit of a slightly herbal component, and also kind of this cooling nature, uh, a little bit of a ginger spicy pop, that sort of thing. Now one note that you pick up on a lot here and that plays pretty heavily is the clear wood note. And that may sound different. It's used in a few fragrances. I think one off the top of my head uh, that's used heavily in is uh, Abercrombie and Fitch Authentic. I believe uses a strong clear wood note and essentially it's kind of a soft woody kind of transparent molecule and it was developed by Firma Niche and uh, you get a lot of it here and really that's the best way to describe it. Soft, woody, transparent, kind of gives the the sense of a wateriness, like a watery feel. And when you take a look at the name, Glacial Essence, you take a look at the bottle, it, it does kind of have the spring water texture about it. Again, it doesn't really make it aquatic, and that's what's cool about this, is that instead of just being aquatic and maybe kind of trending on the basic side, it kind of uses these, these combination of notes to give the appearance and the feeling of like a watery scent without actually being watery, if that makes sense. So the clear wood is pretty heavy. You get a good dose of musk as well. Uh, so it's a lot of clear wood, musk, geranium, mintiness, juniper berries, uh, ginger spiciness, that sort of thing. I really like how it smells a lot. And again, going back to uh, this one being a good starting point, it really would be. If you want to play it as safe as possible, I still think this is gonna be your best bet. You know, um, Bulgarian Man Extreme, very nice stuff. This one almost has a little bit more of a mass appeal though because of how it's composed here and it kind of fills the void of a blue fragrance inspired uh, type of scent. You know, very musk heavy and uh, a lot of times musk forward masculine fragrances tend to do very well in the mass appeal department. Uh, one of the things that this one gets compared to is Parfums de Marley Percival, a uh, blue bottle. And uh, that one, you know, maybe a little bit of a similarity. Both are very strong and heavy in the musk category. And so you, I can kind of see where that comes from. So this one is an Eau de Parfum, just like the whole entire line, except for, I guess, the original, which is an EDT. Yeah, original is EDT. I do believe everything else uh, is the extreme? 
looking into that. Oh, so the extreme isn't either, but uh, you know, this one, the neroli wood, wood neroli, neroli essence, uh, wood essence, whatever they're called, those in Bulgarian man and black EDP. But the point is EDP concentration, which is cool that they went that direction with this one, even though it's fresher. Longevity on my skin is going to be right around in that average uh, point, that av average middle range there of about six, seven hours, somewhere around in there. So not a beast mode scent, not super strong. There are a lot of other blue fragrances out there that are stronger than this one. And again, you know, I'm comparing it to blue fragrances, but it's not quite on that level. But if I had to compare it to kind of a, a genre or a category, it would be closer to that than, you know, like wood and rolly. Um, or Wood Essence would be, or even Man Extreme, or any of the other ones in the line. This is the most mainstream smelling one. And so when you put this up against some of the other uh, popular mainstream summertime fragrances for men on the designer side, this one comes in a little bit below performance wise. Projection, it does do pretty well. Uh, I haven't had a chance to test it in summer yet, so you know the heat's always gonna make it project more. I can pretty much say that with confidence that it'll do the same here, but I haven't had a chance to wear it yet in the summertime. That's something that I will be doing this year though. So if you're looking for just performance, this is not gonna be it for you, and that's just it. Uh, but for me, this isn't something that I would reach for when I want performance. And it's not something that I would buy because I want performance. You got to think that, you know, performance isn't always everything. In a lot of instances, uh, a, a lesser performing fragrance it comes in handy to me. You know, maybe I want to wear this in the first half of the day. Spray it on in the morning. It makes me feel refreshed, energized. I do run some errands, do what I got to do. And by the time midday, kind of early afternoon comes around, if I want to switch over to an evening scent, maybe we have plans in the evening or I just want to switch it up, I can pretty much spray whatever else it is over top of this one. This one will be on its way out and you get the idea. Instead of having a beast mode scent that goes through the whole day, you have something here where you can change it up easily. And not only that, but you know, it, it's just an, a really pleasant one that I'm excited to wear when it's hot outside. You know, it has that overwhelming freshness, that frosty kind of crisp, cool nature about it uh, that is very refreshing. And it, it's more refreshing than a lot of uh, summer fragrances that I have. A lot of the blue fragrances, for example, don't really have that cooling, refreshing smell. Dylan Blue has a sweetness. Sauvage has a very strong peppery note. Uh, Atlantique, while it is aquatic, it also has a sweetness, very ambroxan heavy, kind of spicy from the ambroxan. Uh, so none of those are really cooling necessarily. But this one, you know, it has that cooling, refreshing smell that is very, very pleasant. It's hard to dislike. I mean, this is the type of thing that you wear when it's super hot outside and you're gonna be feeling great. It's not gonna to get too overwhelming. We're pretty much down to the end. I think I've covered it all. It's gonna be a summer fragrance for me, uh, a summer casual. You could wear it for about anything, but that's kind of what I see it fit as. I wanna get down here. So um, the comparisons, we have Carolina Herrera 212, and that's just the original. Uh, I actually don't even have that fragrance. I really don't, so can't input there. Parfums de Marley Percival, again, a little bit musk heavy, yes. Bulgarian Man Extreme, I was just referencing. I really think they're quite different as well. <laughs> Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct. Worlds apart. It's so funny how this goes. Uh, Ferragamo Womo Urban Feel. I do have Urban Feel. I like Urban Feel. Very ambroxan heavy, ozonic. Maybe a little bit in the sense that they're both kind of light and airy, but kind of a stretch. Get this one. Creed Viking. <laughs> wow, yes. It, this is a clone of Creed Viking, guys, definitely. Uh, and it just gets worse. We got Axe, we have Gentle Fluidity, we have YEDP, Versace Porum. Actually, the YEDP, I can kind of see a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm comparing this one to blue fragrances throughout the video. And so instead of thinking this one is like a, a blue fragrance, like Sauvage or Dylan Blue category, if I had to categorize it into one thing, it would be more so leaning to the YSL, YEDT, EDP live uh, category, if anything. But again, still, it does have its differences being that this one is more light, bright, and that clear wood note really does set it apart. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. That's my thoughts on Bulgarian Man Glacial Essence. Around $65 range on discounters right now. Not a bad price at all for a scent like this. Uh, really pretty competitive. Uh, it's not gonna be a mind-blowing scent. It's not gonna be one that will get most of you guys overly excited. Uh, for me, I really like it from a just a wearability, pleasant smelling standpoint, uh, but to really get excited about it and have your mind blown, that's not this one's gonna be. If you can get it for a good deal and have it as a good dumb reach scent, I think you would be very well off doing so. 
Let me know your thoughts on this one down below. Uh, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.